Let us look at one more topic about integration techniques in chapter seven from James Stewart's calculus textbook. This is commonly referred to as the comparison test. Suppose we have two continuous functions, f and g, with the property that f is always bigger than g. I mean, they could be equal, but f is always greater than or equal to g. They're both positive functions on the interval x is greater than or equal to a. So we have some comparison about the functions. f is bigger than, the, f is bigger than g. So if we were to graph this thing, we're saying something like the following. f is this function that's blue right here. And let me, let me resketch it. We're going to have f is something like this. This is f. And then g might do something like the following. But g always sits below f. And so, and, th and this will be true as x is greater than or equal to so like we see in this illustration. So what does this say about improper integrals? Um, if we take the integral from a to infinity of f of x, if this thing is convergent, then that means the integral from a to infinity of g of x is likewise convergent. So what does convergent mean in this setting? We're saying if the area below f is finite, then the area below g must also be finite. If a number is less than a finite number, then it also has to be finite finite. Oh, you might think there's a loophole there. The only exception to that would be negative infinity, but that's why this is so important. If the numbers are positive, the smallest it could be was zero. And so negative infinity is not an escape hatch we can use here. So if the bigger function integrals converges, then the smaller functions integral must also converge. Um, but in contrast, if the integral from a to infinity of g of x dx is divergent, then the integral from a to infinity of f of x must also diverge. Now, because these functions are both positive, the only way they could diverge is if they go off towards infinity. So if the area under the smaller one is infinite, then the area under the bigger one must also be infinity because there's no real number that is greater than infinity. So let me show you how you can use this. So let's consider, um, let's consider the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x squared. Well, e to the negative x squared, that's a hard integral to do. It doesn't have an elementary antiderivative. Um, but some things we can do are the following. It's like, okay, notice that if I go from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx, what I can do is I can break this up from 0 to 1 e to the negative x squared dx plus integral from 1 to infinity. All right, so that might seem like a weird thing to do at first, but it's perfectly legitimate. You can break up the interval however you want. Notice that 0 to infinity, I'm sorry, 0 to 1 is the first one we did. And I can guarantee without calculating this that this is going to be convergent. How do I know that? Well, 0 to 1 is a finite interval, so there's no issues about going to infinity. And e to negative x squared is continuous on that interval, so there's no discontinuities. So this will be a proper integral. Pro proper integrals are always convergent. So I don't, if I'm worried about convergence, I don't have to worry about that first part. So I'm kicking the can down the road a little bit here. And why is that? Well, that's because I want to make a comparison. Although I don't know how to integrate, I don't know how to find an antiderivative for e to the negative x squared, uh, and at least I don't know an elementary antiderivative, what I can do is the following comparison. So on this interval, 1 to infinity, right, we're assuming that x, that x is greater than or equal to 1. And so if x is greater than or equal to 1, this would imply that x is less than x squared. That's why we actually had to kick the can down to 1. x is going to be less than x squared. And therefore, if you times both sides by negative 1, negative x is greater than or equal to negative x squared. Again, this is on the assumption that x is greater than 1. And then if you take the exponential, we're going to get e to the negative x is greater than or equal to e to the negative x squared. And so what this tells us by, the, uh, by comparison, comparing these two things, the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x dx, this is going to be greater than or equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. So that's the comparison we can make there. And so the one on the left, I believe we can calculate this one. The antiderivative is much, much easier. The antiderivative of e to the negative x is going to be negative e to the negative x. Evaluate that from 1 to infinity. Uh, plugging in 
Well, I mean, we can reverse the order, right? This is going to be e to negative x as you go from infinity to 1. So we get e to negative 1 minus e to negative infinity, or if you prefer, this is 1 over e minus 1 over infinity. Dividing by infinity will just be the same thing as going towards 0. And so we get that this integral is 1 over e, which is in particular a finite value. What this tells us is that this integral right here, the integral from 1 to infinity of e to negative x, dx, this is a convergent integral. And so by the comparison test, if you are smaller than a convergent integral, then you yourself are convergent. You're convergent here. And so then if I come back up to the original one, we broke up our integral into two pieces. The first one was, was convergent because it was a proper integral. The second one is likewise convergent by the comparison test. By the comparison test. So by the comparison test, the second one was convergent. So when you glue the two things back together, we see that this integral is in fact a convergent integral. It's really nice there. Now be aware that we know that this integral is convergent, but we don't know what the value is. We do not know what this thing adds up to be, at least not without a separate argument. Now we did compute, we did compute that this integral will add up to be one, this improper integral will be one over e. That doesn't tell us what this is. This just tells us that this one is less than one over e, right? So we have an upper bound for this thing, but we don't know what it is. We've determined convergence, we haven't actually computed it, but we do know that it's a finite number. Um, as a second example of this, let's show that the integral from 1 to infinity of the function 1 plus e to the negative x over x dx is a divergent integral. All right, we're going to show divergence. Now, before we do that one, let me go back to this one right here. We showed that this one was convergent, so the smaller one was convergent. One has to be cautious. If we had shown that this one was actually divergent, that actually says nothing about this one over here. We have to be cautious because if this thing was divergent, the, the, the blue one, that means it was its area turned out to be infinity. Well, what about the one on the right? It could be infinity too, which makes it divergent, but it could also be finite because finite is less than infinity. So be aware that the comparison test does not say anything about if the bigger one is divergent, I can't say anything about the smaller one. Likewise, if the, if the smaller one is convergent, that doesn't say anything about the bigger one because Convergent just means it's finite, and the bigger one could be finite or it could be infinite. There are only two directions that the comparison test makes. Don't make the error of assuming, um, you know, applying the, the comparison test in a situation it doesn't apply. So coming back to this example right here, let's show that it's divergent. And to do that, we're going to make the following observation. e to the negative x is greater than or equal to 0, and this is true for all x. In particular, this is true when x is greater than or equal to 1, right? e to the negative x is always positive. So if I add 1 to it, e to the negative x will be greater than or equal to 1. Um, this is true for all x. And if, if x is positive, this then means that 1 plus e to the negative x over x will be greater than or equal to 1 over x. I divided both sides of the inequality by x, which if that was a negative number, it would switch the direction. But since we're assuming that x is greater than 1, that's a positive value. No directions get switched around right here. And so this is the comparison we want to do. 1 plus e to the negative x over x is greater than or equal to 1. So this tells us that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 plus e to the negative x over x dx, this will be greater than or equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x. And we actually saw this one on a previous slide, but if we were to do it again, we're going to get the natural log of x as you go from 1 to infinity, uh, this gives you, uh, this is going to give you the natural log of infinity minus the natural log of 1, uh, which ends up being infinity itself. So what this tells us is that the smaller integral, this one right here, bum, 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 it turned out to be divergent. And if it's divergent, that means it was infinite here. That then implies that the larger one is likewise divergent. And therefore, this, this, this integral is divergent by, again, the comparison test. And that brings us to the end of lecture 19. It also brings us to the end of chapter 7 
um, in James Stewart's calculus textbook. So that's a good place to, to sign off for today. Um, in chapter eight, we're gonna return to some applications of antiderivatives and integrals that we didn't see in chapter six of Stewart's textbook. So stay tuned for that. Some of those applications will involve numerical approximations. Some of them will involve actually improper integrals, believe it or not. Um, and so these, these applications we had to postpone until now because now that we've developed techniques of integration like we did in chapter seven, we're now ready to approach uh, story problems which we were not able to do beforehand. So uh, check out the link that you can see right now uh, to, to see those videos and I'll, I'll hopefully see you then. Bye everyone.